Greetings, Pokemons, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today we are going to be learning how to make some cool camera effects. But first, I wanted to tell you about our overall project here. So as you all know, uh, I participate in the Global Game Jam every year coming up in January. So we have about half a year left. And throughout the year, I've been learning more about UE in order to fine tune my skills so that this upcoming year I can make a project entirely in UE4. So, uh, you know, 48 hour timeline is pretty crunch crunch. So I want to make sure that I have the, the chops it takes to do it. So I have an idea for a game that I've been holding on to, and I'm going to go ahead and start building that one piece at a time each week with you guys. So we're going to work together on this, and every week I want to bring you uh, just a little bit of functionality, the little bit of things that I've been working on towards the project. So today we're going to be creating two things. Let me show you. I'm going to go get and hit play. So this is our character here running around, and it's going to be a third person uh, over the shoulder kind of top down hack and slash kind of thing. And the character, I want to do a couple things. I want to make sure that you are focused on the battlefield, which is all around you with tiles that are changing and all kinds of things. So I want to do a. I want to limit the camera uh, pitch. So here you can see that the camera cannot go any lower or higher than this. And this forces us to be looking at the floor and kind of paying attention to what's going on, okay? So that was the idea behind that. But then I also wanted you to have a true scroll wheel zoom in and out. So that's what we have here. So if I scroll out, you can see that we are scrolled out. We can see a lot more of the battlefield now. And I can scroll in for some more delicate work when I'm placing objects and that sort of thing. So these are the two effects that we're going to make today. And this is based upon a third person template. And I have to apologize in advance. I did want to create this from a completely blank blank project. However, twice now the project has crashed and I just wanna make sure that I show you how the blueprint works and uh, creating it from scratch or disabling it seems to be giving me trouble. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this was a completely new third person template. As you can see, I haven't changed any of this. And all I've done is make changes inside of the third person character blueprint. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. So first up, uh, let's jump right over to the viewport and talk about the changes made here. So the changes here are quite simple. For the camera itself, you'll notice that the transform is really all I changed. It is at 0, 0, 0, even though it doesn't look like it. And it is rotated on the Y here, the pitch, to negative 45 degrees. And it's positioned such that it kind of looks at the character. And the way that works is we're actually using some attributes of the camera boom. Now you see this line pointing at the character here. This line is generated based upon two values here in the camera subsection. The target arm length is set to a value of 300 currently, and the target offset Z is set to 300. Now if I change these values, so let's do 100, you'll notice that the car car camera gets closer to the character, but it does not actually pivot to look at the character properly. However, if I change my offset to 100 as well, it maintains that 45 degree aspect ratio. And that's what we're coding today. So we'll do 300 again and 300 again here. So as long as they're the same value, if we could link these together, so if one changes, the other changes, then it would scroll up and down along this line. Kind of perfect, that's what we want. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is how we did the whole limit of the cam character, the camera, going back and forth over the character. Uh, so that limit is the pitch. So if we look at our scripting here, it's very simple. On event begin play, we're going to get our player camera manager. And I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanna set a new value for the view pitch maximum. And I just set it to 10 for right now. We can adjust that value in the future. If we feel like we need to make more of an adjustment, that's fine. You could even parameterize this. It'd be really easy to do so. So I'm going to set the view pitch max to 10 and the view pitch min to minus 10. And what that does for us is when we hit play, that's this effect here. So I get stopped right about there and stopped right about there. So that means that we are constantly looking mostly at the floor, which is important. Okay. Whoa, that's our, that's our camera there. Okay. So now let's look at how we do the scroll wheel in and out. So let's take a look at the functionality first. So if I pull back on the meal on the wheel, and now if I pull forward on the wheel, that's what happens. There we go, all the way in. So we've set limits to this as the important thing. So let's go to our code here and take a look. So what we're actually accessing, as we said, is the target arm length and the target offset of our camera boom. So when we mouse wheel down, we want to set the target arm length. 
Now we want to set it to its current value plus a value, but we do need to clamp it in order to make sure that we don't go above or below our minimum and maximum. So here I'm getting camera boom, camera arm length, adding 25, clamping it to a minimum value of 325 and a maximum of 600, and then setting that value. And then our target offset is actually a vector, so we need to take this value and throw it into the Z of a make vector and then pump that in there. And all the targets here are all coming from the camera boom. And then down here is the exact same thing for mouse wheeling up. However, I'm doing a minus float here, so we are subtracting 25 on this, but all the rest of these are the exact same. So I'm gonna clamp our value between 325 is the most zoomed in we can get and 600 is the most zoomed out we can get. And then we're gonna set the target arm length equal to that return value. And then we're gonna make a vector because that's what our target offset needs. So let's take a look. So we're gonna compile, everything is good. Go back to the main view. Now we can run around and I can zoom out, but only to a certain maximum. And I can zoom in only to a certain minimum. Now you'll notice that when I zoom in and out, right about here, it sort of shifts right when we get to the very end. And that's a mistake I made based upon the numbers I chose. I was just playing with numbers and seeing what I liked as far as the feel of the field of view here. So if I zoom in, it kind of just pops at the end. And that's because we're working with values of 25. 25 and then we go up by another 25. And then when you go past a certain threshold, it sort of snaps to the, to the maximum or snaps to the minimum. And that's what you're seeing is that effect. So there is a way to correct that is you have to do some better math. And then ultimately what I would love to do, be able to do is as I scroll back on the wheel or scroll in on the wheel rather, I want to be able to smoothly interpolate between the two values. So if I just do one tick, it would smoothly go from one to the next and another tick smoothly go from one to the next. So we'll work on that in the future, but for now, I'm just working on getting my uh, view set up in the way that I want because you're gonna be working on a huge board with different tiles and things going on and I want you to be able to see the battlefield. That's the important thing is seeing what's going around you're gonna to have to pick things up and move them around and set them down and fend off enemies. And so you have to be able to see where you're going all the time. So that limiting the camera is because you don't need to be looking at the sky. There's nothing up there, there's nothing important. So focus on where you need to focus. So that's all the code we have for today and it's actually quite simple. I'll go ahead and throw this guy into a comment as well so we can move him around more nicely. Let's get that tucked away. So there you go. So this is the default third person character. And then we've only added these right here. And they're quite simple, really, nothing too complex, but we wanted to make sure that we have that proper camera set up before we move on to the other uh, game functionality. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you like the idea of uh, building a game with me slowly, one piece at a time. I have a pretty neat idea, I think, and uh, I want to execute it. So I'm working really hard, and every week I'm going to bring you just a little bit more of the functionality, and you guys will get to see the game kind of come to life. So uh, that's all for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. So until next time, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.